Young Living's draft horse team had another amazing season. It was a year with adversity, but also great success. It's time for our yearly catch up with what's been going on down at the farm with our award winning draft horse team. Hello and welcome to Young Living's podcast, The Wild Drop. My name is Jacob Young, your host. Young Living is the world leader in producing and distributing premium essential oils. And this podcast will provide you with drops of information about Young Living, including stories, history, product information, lots of little fun facts, and even more. Well, Tim and Brittany, welcome back to the podcast for your second time. How are you feeling? Good. We're happy to be back. Happy to be back, just like Tim said. Well, welcome back to Utah. You guys were just on the road. Well, this whole year you've been on the road, but you just got back uh, from your Heber show, correct? And we'll be heading out to Michigan, or did you finish Michigan already? No, we just got back from uh, Lansing, Michigan uh, the fri- last Friday. Oh, fantastic. So you did that show. How did you do at that show? Oh, pretty well. The horses drove pretty well. Um, sometimes things don't always, always go to plan, and sometimes, uh, you know, we're judged by one judge, and it's it's their a matter of their opinion. And I'd have to say I disagreed with some of their opinions, <laughs> but uh, but that's how it goes. But that, all in all, the horses did pretty well. So fantastic! And that's always our goal, and where we set our benchmark is how did the horses drive? Are we getting the most? Are we getting a good drive out of the horses and everything we can out of them? And that's the only thing we can control. Let the judging and the chips fall where they may after that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a great way to look about it is really see how the horses did. And regardless of what the judge says, if you know how your horses did, that's all that matters at the end of the day. So with your Heber and Michigan show, that's the oh, and fall festival. That's the start of the new season. So I, I quickly want to go back and talk about, you know, our 2022 season, right? So congratulations to you guys and your team, you guys worked so phenomenally hard to get to the finals. Just making it to the finals is a huge accomplishment. Third place, third in the world for the classic Six Horse Hitch series is definitely no small feat, and it is definitely a huge bragging right. So I just want to say thank you to you guys and a huge congratulations to the both of you. That is amazing. I'd love it if you could kind of do like a very short recap of last year and how you felt like the season went and, you know, the challenges and uh, the fun times that you went through, you know, what, what what was the year like for you guys, the 2021-2022 season? Well, first I want to say thank you, you and and to you guys in Young, Lo- Young Living for the opportunity to do this. Uh, it's it's great. So yeah, the, the, the 2021 season ends Labor Day weekend and then we start showing last year at the Fall Festival was our first show to accumulate points for the this next show season. But, uh, you know, we... We started out. We had started off well at our show. Um, I think we won both sixes, and then Heber. We moved on to win a couple sixes there, and all in all, in all the year was was we did quite well. We had uh, probably the biggest challenges we had. Two of the horses that we uh, had in the sixth when we won the finals last year. Um, unfortunately, we they're no longer with us. So they uh, they're Skipper and Crank, and you know that. They were swinging lead horse with Skipper and and uh, Crank was a wheel swing horse and uh, you know just on circumstances out of our control uh, they're no longer with us and they were a big part of what we had done. Skipper had been there ever since we had yeah. we had been at Young Living. Uh, we won a World Perch on Congress and uh, with Classic Series final two Classic Series finals with him and the Hitch and. Uh, you know he's a great horse for us, and Crank was a young horse, and it was you know it was kind of unexpected for his age um, to lose him. But uh, you know we had some young other young horses step in and did a great job for us. Um, we still have the one horse we raised, Baja. He's still still in the lead, but uh, we replaced those guys with um, uh, another four year old Taz and and Hill, and and uh, you know they pretty much picked off picked up where the others left off. And you know all through the show season we had really had a great year. You know there's always ups and downs. But uh, you always look at, try to get the most out of your horses and, uh, you know, focus on that. That's all you, because that's all you can control. Yeah. And sometimes you, they're, I mean, they're, they're animals, you, you yeah. can't control them. So there, There's only, you're absolutely right. There's only so much that you can control. I mean, it's just like with jousting, no matter how many times you practice, no matter how many times you train. And, you know, unfortunately, we, we've had some very unfortunate uh, accidents with some of our horses as well. Just something that entirely wasn't uh, in our control. My dad's very first jousting horse, Goliath, um, big, big horse. And we got Simeon out of Goliath. 
And, you know, Goliath was doing great. You know, my dad, like, pampered that horse. You know how my dad was horses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely just pampered horses. Um, like they were his own kids. And my dad just went out to the stall one day, and he just passed away. Yeah. And, I mean, he was he was fairly old. He was about 12, 13, but my dad figured he had a few more years in him. Um, but I, I think it's also what makes a great horseman, which is what you two are, and, and the whole team and everybody in, you know, just the horse industry. What makes a great horseman is being able to adapt to those types of circumstances, challenging, you know, whether it's your horse that passes away or, or something happens or whatever, being able to adapt and overcome that and be able to keep pushing on, um, I think is amazing, especially with what you guys do. Oh, that, that was really hard to hear about those two. Um, but we've had a great team this year. So obviously with the team, you know, you kind of train those primary six horses to be part of the team. And when you lose a horse or you end up swapping out a horse, what, what, what is that process like? What was that like for you guys? Well, we, we always try to have, uh, like a, like a, our bench and, you know, they get into smaller classes or sometimes in a, in different shows, different circumstances, they get into the six. So when you really need to count on them, you can know what to expect from them. And also they know what the expectation is, like what, how you want them to drive and, and the settings and everything. Like, the sixes are just, everybody pushes for that. So yeah. it's, it's more intense. I would say that's where my role often comes in. I usually get the younger horses to drive in the <laughs> cart classes. And just when I have this nice cart horse that's really performing well for me is when I get told he's going to make it in the six. And then it's time for me to start back over. But that's where we try to really build up their confidence for the younger horses. When we buy a young horse, really they're put into the program and they're probably not going to see the six for a full year because we need to get to know them. And then the biggest part, like Tim was saying, we need to expose them to the environment. We need to develop that muscle memory. So when you ask them to perform, they know what to do and what's expected of them. And it's secondhand for them. Yeah. yeah. We have to do the exact same thing with the jousting horses is it's an environment that is very unknown. And most horses will never see an arena within the first two years of their life uh, unless they're like being shown or shown off or something like that. And even at that time, it's unfamiliar with them. So we kind of have to do and, and, you know, this sounds more of like a bad term and it's really not. But desensitization, right? You have to get them accustomed to the area, what to expect, what to, you know, uh, what we expect from those horses as well. And so like with our horses, you know, we go into the arena, we let them roam the arena for a good while. We let them sniff everything that they possibly can. So they know that it's there and, and nothing's going to change. And then the other part that we do is like the, the, the sounds. There's a lot of sounds that most horses aren't used to, just like a lot of the gear that you guys use. I bet the the clinging and the chimes and the little bells that are on there as well as like the loudness of the wagon is something they're not familiar with as well. So there's a lot that you have to do in order to prepare that horse to even be put onto a wagon, let alone a hitch as well. Um, and making sure that they're accustomed to everything. Otherwise they, you know, they kind of get spooked, they get scared. And when you do do that, the horse ends up being a lot more comfortable and performs a lot better as well. Yeah. And that's what we've noticed with our jousting horses as well is once we've gone through that uh, training, the desensitization, and they're used to the sounds, they're, they're a lot more comfortable because they're like, oh yeah, I, I, I know what's gonna happen, I expect that and whatnot. And then when they start doing all that, that's all they want to do. Right. And that's what I see with our big draft horses is like when they're getting ready, there's almost kind of like this sensation that you get with the horses. It's like, don't talk to me. I'm in my, I'm in my game mode right now. I, this is focus time. I'm getting ready for the show. And there you can just see it on them and they love it. They, they love to perform. They love to show for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. We, we talk a lot about when you say the desensitizing for us, Another way that we put it to people, too, is a lot of building the trust. Yes. So for us, especially our arena during the fall festival, the wind can kick up there in mm -hmm. Mona, Utah. And most horses out in a field, like you were describing, naturally to them, they're going to turn away from that. They're not going to face it head on. But when a horse wants to perform and has so much trust in their driver or rider, they will literally face right into water, rain, dust, whatever you ask of them, because they completely trust that 
you will not fail them, that you're they're safe with you, and they're going to ignore those other instincts because you've built that relationship. That's that's what I was going to say. That's the the horse's instinct. They're they're you know they're it's fight or flight, and they're a flight animal. Their instinct is to run away from what they're scared of. Yeah. So you're taking away their inst- natural instinct, like j- the jousting. Like, you know, most horses don't like running at it. They're running running at each yeah. other with someone on top of them, you know. So it's just getting them the trust. like Brittany said, trust. But they because that's their instinct. They're they you kind of have to get where their instinct is. Okay, this is my job. I love this. this yeah. Is, and that's really the what the good ones do. They they do, and it's it's so funny that first little bit of training with them when we put them into what's called the least, which is that big middle part um, where they run at each other. They'll run to each other and then they'll meet each other. They, they don't <laughs> like running past each other for the first little bit. Some horses do, some horses don't. But once they've run past each other a few times, I mean, like Kyra's horse uh, and my horse Draco. They lunge the hardest down that list. They love charging down that list. Kyra's horse rears up and backs up and backs up. And sometimes we're afraid that they're going to break like that end piece on the list because they keep backing up into it. And then he pushes off of that thing. And Draco, I have to like sit there as calm as I possibly can because if I'm not calm, he gets all jittery and antsy and he's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And it's the same thing. It's uh, I'm, I'm sure for you guys, they can also feel your energy as well. And you have to be in a very composed manner um so they're also just yeah. as composed yeah that that uh definitely and then and each horse is different because they have their own personality yes just like people i mean there's a lot of things that they're 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 not a person but there's also <laughs> things that, you know they have the they have their own per, all each have their own personalities yes so you you've had this last year you just started the new year let's go over some of the fun accomplishments um, we obviously talked about the challenge of this, you know, the 2021, 2022 year, but what was, what were some of the fun accomplishments that you guys, uh, made or saw or enjoyed, uh, throughout the season this year? Well, it, it was, was very gratifying with losing the two horses, but also maintaining, like bringing new horses into it and maintaining what we, where we were at. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, like we won both six is the national western stock show which was like what you, you really sparked your your father's interest in having the, yep. the hitch and uh so that's always a great show now that goes back on my family to my family my my grandpa helped bring the um draft horses back to the stock show like they quit showing in the 30s there with the draft horses and i think it was 1981 they brought back the draft horse show and my grandpa was a big part of getting it back so it was always oh, wow. a special show to to him too so it, it's always it was it was great but you know, we had the we still had our core three horses, the lead team and King. Um, so you know, you it, when you can add pieces to, you know, I mean, they're like, in my opinion, like Hall of Famers. Yeah. Especially King. King's old or an older horse, and he's done it for a long time, and he's a great horse, has a great personality. Um, you know, our six year old daughter can lead him. I always say, my husband tries not to have favorites, but King is definitely his favorite, and I always yeah. say. I will be lucky if I'm married next to my husband, but I'm pretty sure King will be buried next to him. <laughs> there we go. Well, honey, he's only, I hope I live a little longer than King. <laughs> I know, but he, he is. They don't make horses like him. But, you know, winning the stock show was great. And then we had another show in Arizona where I, we hooked the six three times and we won two sixes and we were second and the third. And moving into uh, the summer at the... Ohio State Fair, they have what they call the Governor's Cup, and I think there was twenty three sixes. And wow, that's we, a we, lot of hitches. We won that. Um, that was I know we had never won that before. We'd only shown it, I think the second or third year we've shown it at the Ohio State Fair, but um, yeah. So that was it's kind of a it's a big class because a lot of the the best hitches are there. Like only a couple hitches that were at the finals were not at the Governor's Cup. Okay, cool. Bouncing on that, that yeah, it was definitely an accomplishment when we went to Ohio. I had never been to the state fair. We had shown the previous year at the Ohio State Fair, but it Mm -hmm. had to be held in Indiana because of the COVID restrictions. So I had never been there, but I'd always heard about this Governor's Cup. And like Tim said, the best of the best are there. It's definitely like the Big Ten or the Pac-12 going head to head. And when we went into the ring, I was like, okay, this... And it's a tricky ring. It's not forgiving. Yeah. So if you skim the rail with any of your eveners anything like that there's these huge posts and it will stop you on a dime so i'm up there on the wagon with him like 
don't get too close. Don't go too deep in the corners. You've seen my husband drive. He likes to go right into the corner. So I'm thinking, okay, this is definitely going to be a tricky drive. You're definitely going to have to get the most out of them. So it was definitely a checkbox that we had had for a long time of wanting to go there and accomplish that. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome to to win it at the Governor's Cup. That's super cool, especially with all the big teams that are there, the very well-known name teams as well, and to take that home. I feel like that's almost kind of like a good, um, kind of a good representation of what you can expect in the world finals, at least. And obviously, yeah. like you said, at yes. every single show, it's a different judge, and each judge has different opinions and whatnot. But as far as like how your horse, horses showed, you can kind of expect something yeah. similar as far as how they're going to perform against the others as well. So, yeah. And then we moved into the Scott County Fair, which was the end of July, and most of the top pitches that were at the Governor's Cup were there as well, and we won both sixes there too. So we were kind of on a roll, and then, you know, is this, you know, it's like a season. It's like a, a football season. Or there's ups and downs in it. Mm-hmm. And the biggest thing is you're you want your up at the right time. It needs to be right at the right time. And maybe this year we peaked a little early. Yeah, but it's hard to it's hard to anticipate what's going to happen in the future. And then it's everything was going really good, and you're trying to just maintain it. And then you know because they have their own personalities, their horses. You know, yeah. as the show season goes on, they get a little tired, or you know, they needed a break. And we really had a had done. A lot, of, you know, had had a lot of breaks for him at the end of the show season. Hopefully, the let him recharge, and and they honestly they drove pretty well at the end of the year. You know, small things, details here or there that something happened. You know, you might have a horse break stride. Yeah, in front of a judge. So I think one thing we talk about a lot. We're really proud of the third for the classic series how we finished out. But I was really proud of we had one of the new horses. Jake that we had to ask to step up at the world finals in the cart class. So I participated in the ladies diamond drive. So this horse, we literally bought this spring. We'd asked him to kind of be that backup horse because we had to pull up some from the bench and Mm -hmm. he went on to be the reserve champion in a very, very competitive class there. So that was was definitely, there are some good lady drivers in that class as well. And for him to take reserve grand champion and you as well, I was super proud of that. In his first that. year. That that is to what keeps you recharged because people can say, How do you keep doing it year after year? How do you pack up the horses and your family and live on the road for five, six months out of the year? But it's when you see that spark in the new horse that you really the spring is when we buy most of the horses or we get in our younger horses. Yeah. And it's kind of like a draft. Only we don't have all of the information. They can't talk to us. They can't tell us. We have to go out there and assess them. <laughs> yeah. And you literally are buying a glimpse. You saw a potential. But the part that we can't buy and we can't know is when it gets down to the nitty gritty, is that horse going to have the heart to push through and really enjoy and love the showing? And I feel like that's what we did see at the end of the year for us is – Jake, Mario, horses like that that are kind of our up and coming and newbies. That's what's exciting is to see them take that next step it's, and to see where they're going to go with that. Yes, yeah, to is to see them want to grow and for them to want to succeed and go on to bigger and 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 better things and more fun things for them as well. So yeah, well, I guess one thing we didn't I had, we I brought up the two two of the horses we put in the six, but we also this year primarily used a three year old horse in the wheel, which is unheard of. Yeah. For this, you know, three-year-olds just physically mature quite yet. You know, usually they're about four, and um, he did a great job for us all year. Yeah, for the for the team that you guys had, and for the changes that you had to make, essentially last second, in order to accumulate the points to make it to the world finals, y'all did a, a, an amazing job. And the horses did phenomenal. They looked great. They did great. And like I said, you had two brand new horses and, and some, you know, you had a few veterans and you had a, quite a few rookies as well performing in their very first world finals. And I think they did exceptionally well, especially, you know, for it being their first time and for not having that much training, essentially, you know, not that much lead time or prep time yeah. or anything like that. Couldn't have asked anything better from them. And yeah. I know you always strive for the best. <laughs> and, you know, we kind of joked about it. Like, you know, the years that we've won it, it's always been an odd year. Yes. And this year just happened to be an even year. So, you know, I can only assume that <laughs> next year, you know. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> 
So we talked about, uh, you know, this season, that well, last year's season. So what does the 23 season look like? Because you, you kind of just hit your winter break. Mm-hmm. You finished your Heber and your, and your Lansing, Michigan show, and you guys are, are pretty much done till about February is what you were telling me, correct? No, uh, January. It was about the middle of January. Oh, okay. Uh, though there's a show there in Grand Island, Nebraska. Um, usually there's a show in Loveland, Colorado, but they're working on the facility. So this year they're going to, um, like Kirk Messenger is uh, kind of help putting the show together in Grand Island for this year just because uh, for people to travel from the east to come west, it's a lot better to have two shows. Yes, for sure. So to, to fill in for Loveland this year. and uh, But, yeah, <clears throat> then there'll be the stock show, and then we move, have another show in Arizona, and then, you know, we have a break moving into next summer. But, you know, we start out the this show season, you know, at the fall festival wouldn't in fall festival then there's show in heber city and then like two weeks later we go back to lansing michigan i think one thing that we can brag about is like i said there's roughly 74 shows in north america and our fall festival was nominated as the top five by our membership so that's those folks that are coming and have been at our show they've seen it and we were nominated to be in the top five of the last, best of the show the best last of two years shows yeah for the last two years so we leave the finals in Shipshawan, Indiana. We come back. We get done showing on Saturday. We start showing Thursday, the following Thursday in Mona, Utah. Um, and, it, you know, we don't just drive straight through. The horses need a break or whatever. It took us three days to get back. And I think it was a total of about 1,800 miles. And then oh, we made, man. Going about another 1,800 miles back to Lansing, Michigan, another 1,800 miles back. So, you know, we, we put some miles on. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and I think, too, for people to understand, for the horses to travel those days in between the shows, it's not just a break for them because for you and I to ride in a vehicle, it's passive. We're just sitting there. They have to stand they, and balance. Yep. Yeah. So they have to stand. They have to balance. They have to counterbalance. So it takes an exertion out on them. So we have to break frequently. We have to make sure that they get off. They have people ask, so what do you do? Do they just stay in the trailer? No, there's literally horse hotels that we have to book ahead of time and we have to lay over at these locations we kind of have a pretty set circuit so that i can get in there because usually there's a whole herd of us coming back for the fall festival so i have to make sure that we're into all of our locations because not every horse hotel can accommodate a draft horse so we have to have all those logistics in place I, I love the fact that there's actually a horse hotel. That, that was my question because I know when we would go camping up in, uh, it was kind of near where my dad was growing up in Chalice, Idaho. We would stop at this one place that was a hotel and had a smaller stall out there. My dad called it the horse hotel, but I always thought he was being funny. I didn't know horse hotels actually yep. existed. You can, <laughs> yep. When you're traveling around, you can look up, look up I think there's a, isn't there a, a directory. Yep. A directory. Oh, okay. So, wow. But like Brittany said, we have places we generally go, you know, because yeah. we travel a lot of the same route going yeah. back and forth from east to west and west to east. So 80 through Nebraska. It's yeah. pretty well set. Yeah. <laughs> so... So if you can, and if you want to, that is, do you have a game plan kind of set for this year? Like, mm-hmm. what, what, what's kind of like your, your plan? Obviously, you're, I assume yeah. the end goal is to win the World Finals for the mm-hmm. 23 season. Yeah, that's correct. Um, but is there also kind of like smaller goals that you're setting for individual horses or for your team yourself? Like, what, what's kind of your game plan? What are some accomplishments you're wanting to hit and make? So as far as the game plan, I would say for the season, the show season, there's obviously 74 shows that we can hit in the year. You're not going to go to all 74. Yeah. So our game plan is to start out in January, go to the two shows out in the West, which is one thing that I do think is great because that was your dad's goal is to bring the shows back to the western part of the country. Out here, there's all the light horses. Everybody knows cowboys, but they don't know about the draft horses that also help build this country. So we really, really feel strongly in supporting the western shows. There'll be another group of hitches that go down to Florida. They have two shows down there on the east coast. We think it'll probably be in the horse's best interest not to trek to four shows like that. So we kind of go with the strategy less shows but bigger shows so that we don't have to put all that travel exertion on them then they'll get that break and then we'll head out in may 
And when we leave in May for five months, the strategy behind that is so that we can cluster the shows in the Midwest is where the bulk of them will be. But individual sh- individual goals for the boys. Well, like right now, you said we're on a break. So I'm actually in the process of reset, like reshoeing the horses. I put a little smaller shoe on them and, and cut, kind of cut their feet back, trying, you know, keep a healthy foot on them. Yeah. And they'll have a month to five weeks off. And we'll put them on the walker for some exercise a little bit, but also we'll turn them on the runs out by the barn. You know, a combination of you want them to be in shape in the training, but also you don't want to overtrain them at home. Yeah. And, you know, and, and they're kind of tired or they're already tired for the show. Yeah. Or just, you know, their bodies, you know, they're, they're big athletes. You know, they only have so many laps around the ring that yeah. they're going to make in their lifetime. I mean, that's just, that's just the fact of it. They only have so many miles on them. So you try not to use all the miles at home. Yeah. Big athletes that get pampered <laughs> and loved and conditioned. So obviously after the big shows, what what what's that like? Do you, do you apply? Uh, I know for our jousting horses, we have like this vibrating heater pad that goes on them to kind of help relax their muscles. Do you guys have something similar to that? Do you have like a routine that each horse goes through? What what do you all do? Yeah, you know the, some things we we. Uh, geared towards one horse more than the other. Like one horse, there's a couple of horses like will soak their feet, front feet in cold water and like help with inflammation in their front feet from the, from the trotting and yeah. stuff. Like, especially an older horse like King. And then like we use the beamer blankets on them. And, um, we also, they also get an inch of red twice a day. That helps, you know, that it just helps with the lactic acid build up and they love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That helps keep them performing day after day. Yep. And, you know, the shoeing is a big part of it you know, keeping the balance, a balanced foot. You, we, you know, we put different pads on and, and use different things to help their performance, but also you, you, you want the horse to be the, as comfortable as they yeah, possibly can obviously. be and healthy as they can be. Cause I always feel like that's the biggest factor in a horse performing well. And I really want to quickly cut in and just say, Tim won best shod this year, meaning he won best shoeman. Uh, is that farrier. a correct term? Best farrier. Farrier, yeah. Uh, so for those of you that are not familiar with horse terms, that just comes to show that Tim happens to be the best shoer there is when it comes to shoeing horses. Thank you for hitting on that. I was going to as well because <laughs> I feel like I get to live it in the actual moment when he could have drove a horse that day, seen how they were performing, and I'll get a call and he'll say, okay, I'm not going to be home for supper. I think I just need to move back a shoe an eighth of an inch. I took off an eighth of an inch that he thought was going to make a difference in those long hours. They they really do translate, and it was exciting to have him nominated by his peers. Uh, that's fantastic that you're able to do that on a whim and a fly. I, that's... Not something like everyone can do. I, I hope you understand that. That's kind of like a, a talent. Uh, the best way that I can like explain that to myself in like car terms is like, oh, you know, you felt a little hoppy coming off the line, so you lower your tire pressure so it hooks a bit better. The exact same thing. It's just those very small, minute changes that make a world of difference. And you're able to do that on the fly and be able to just know that and how to change that and adjust that. So I quickly just want to butt it in. You, your 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 star moment can end now. I see you don't like being called out or or given compliments. He doesn't. You can continue now. <laughs> no, you, I just feel like you you brag on yourself. Then usually there's there's the something around the corner that's going to knock you back down. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, those those uh, different modalities that we use with the horses, a theraplate, uh, we use with pretty much all of them, and that's so that's like they stand on the. Stand oh, on the it. vibrating plate. Yeah, yeah. they stand on oh, it. Oh, wow. That's what, that's what it's called. The horses stand on it. Usually, you know, you, most horses, 20 minutes or so. And there's different settings on it. We kind of, I don't like to get too aggressive because you don't, Yeah. you just kind of see how the, each horse responds to it. And like right now with the time off and stuff, we don't, we're not working them and things. So we try not to, I honestly, I think the horses kind of like sometimes just to be like, just, yeah, just left, left alone. alone. Yeah. You know, we, a we mental them, break. We turn them out. They get a little, they get the, the mental break of it. You know, they love getting turned out. They get, that's the time when they, they can do whatever they want. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, why did you think you needed to do that? Cause they, <laughs> you know, they just, you know, they're they, big kids. Yeah. That's no yeah. matter how old they are. They're yeah, big kids. They're big kids. So that's what I always say too. A lot of times when we're driving and training them, they give us so much of their trust. So during the day, we direct their day. And at night, 
they're left to their own devices or when they're out in the runs, they're left to their own devices. Which is scary. It yeah. is. Because I swear <laughs> that they communicate to each other and they're like, what can we break today? And that's when I'm always thinking to myself, this is why we can't have anything nice because you break it like yeah. a child. Oh, they're man. giant three-year-olds. Yep, yeah. giant three-year-olds. Two, sure. this is a time when we get to kind of for lack of a better term, love up on them and just let them be horses and let their personality shine through. Like you said, we could, we don't have to rush to the next thing. When we're at a show, it's, it's all timed out and we're rushing and we're rushing. We're getting yeah. onto the next thing where this is a time where we can come to the bar and we can pick stalls and we can just have the kids around and they can be, it's good. Cause it's going to take longer for them to pick the stalls. It's going to take longer for them to lead the horses to the wash rack. But that also gives them that interaction because most kids don't grow up and suddenly decide at 18 years old that I want to work 80 plus hours this yeah. week caring for the horses. They have to have been exposed to it. But also when you talk about the spa too, a lot of that happens because we get done with the show and yet we're tired and we're hungry, but they just perform for us and we need to put all their needs ahead of ourselves. So that's a big lesson I feel like we get to take each day is we're putting the horse's needs ahead of our own and making sure that they're cared for. I love that. So another thing that when we talk about their spa day, obviously the horses have all of the Young Living products at their disposal. And we really do, like Tim has been saying, we try to assess them on an individual basis. We don't make just blanket treatments for them all, but we love using the Cool Azul over their backs, large muscle groups, because they are a 2,000 plus pound animal. Yeah. And the thieves, obviously, everything in the barn, we like to make sure it's all healthy and clean for them. And from there, we just go on to see which individual needs on that given day. Yeah, and they and, and Ningxia, right? You yep. add Ningxia in their grain or yep. in their water. They love the Ningxia. I heard yeah. they love the Ningxia. We carry it in pallets full <laughs> down the road. <laughs> I think it was King, one of the very last shows that my dad went to. Um, he had a bottle of Shutron, and it was one of my dad's favorite oils with Shutron and highest potential. And I remember he had some on his hand, and King kept like nibbling at his hands and whatnot. So my dad opened his palm, and King would lick the Shutron off his hand. He loved it so, so much. So I remember my dad went back to the hotel room and uh, called. Someone was flying up, I can't remember, for the show, and said, hey, bring up a few bottles of Shutron. And he applied Shutron to all the horses right before the show. I don't know if you remember that or not, but... Mm -hmm fun little story to share with everybody there. So I, we all appreciate everything that you do, the way that you represent Young Living, the way that you represent the horse industry as well. Um, one of the biggest questions that I get all the time is how can I stay up to date? How can I follow the draft horse team? Yep. And you guys obviously have a social media, which yep. is the Young Living Pertrons at Mona, Utah. On Facebook. On Facebook. Yep. And for those of you that are listening on YouTube right now, we'll have a link in the description down below where you can go and check it out. You can share with everybody. And uh, Brittany's pretty good at keeping up to date on that, posting updates, sharing pictures and photos and talking about the horses. And um, she also posts like what shows they're going yep. to and whatnot. So you can key up to date with that. And then uh, sometimes the Facebook page, the classic six, six yep. horse series is is that the facebook page yep the classic series six horse hitch series or you can also go to drive com, and that's where you can find any of the upcoming shows as far as if there might be a show in your area whether we're there or not that's where you can maybe go see some of the draft horses and then you can book your trip to our very own fall festival yep and then you can follow the points in real time you can see where we're at in the point chase for the six horse hitch the classic series cart and then the youth cart you can see where Everything is falling yep. in real time. And they just finished or should be close to finishing uploading the world finals. Um, so you'll be able to see that on that page. And like I said, we'll, we'll link that in the description as well. So, well, thank you both very, very much for coming back onto the show. It was a fantastic year. Like I said, for me, regardless of where you guys place, it could have been 10th or 12th. I honestly could not have cared less. Seeing you guys and the horses perform in that arena is the biggest blessing to me and i know my dad surely loved it as well so well we just like to say thank you to the to the young family you and your mother and and joseph and you're great to us and the young living company and we get a lot of support and and also too you know we talked well Brittany and i would all you know our staff is second to none they work hard for us yeah and, they and do. the horses and you know our staffing would be 
I'll go alphabetically so I don't forget nobody, but uh, I'll try to. <laughs> a- Abby Shul, Bradley Glover, uh, Georgia Terry, Haley and Jamie Schubert, Brittany Kuyper, and Lindsey Russell. And, you know, most of them travel with us. Um, you know, there's four of them that travel through the shows with us, and, and we kind of rotate through. But there, there's the th- there was three gals that stayed home this year and helped take care. We had mares and foals, um, tours at the farm. And drove some some other young horses, uh, like a horse that we raised there at the farm that yeah. hopefully maybe might make the hitch someday. And you know they did a great job. They all do a great job, and you know they're they're great people to have working with us. And and we can't do it without them. And we like th- yeah the I'd always wanted a job like this, but um, Gary gave me the opportunity to to do it. So we're indebted to the company, but most of all the young family. Well, once again, thank you to you and your entire team for everything that you do and uh, hope to have you back on the show next year. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you to the whole Young Living Draft Horse team and thank you all so much for tuning into this episode of The Wild Drop. Remember, you can listen on iTunes, Spotify, on YouTube, and our website at www.youngliving.com. Don't forget to oil up Young Living family. This is Jacob Young, dropping out. Take care.